This video comes to you in three parts. I'll start by telling you what I thought of the Pokemon Presents and what I expect from Pokemon this year. Then I will answer some questions from the Wild Encounter tag started by my friend Elite Trainer Lin. And to close off, I'll tell you what to expect from me this year. If any part doesn't interest you, you can use the chapter markers to skip ahead. Part 1, Pokemon Presents. There's only two things that I want to comment on, and the first one is pretty quick. I'm excited for the TCG Pocket mobile game. I love Pokemon card art, but collecting Pokemon cards makes me uneasy thanks to all of the paper, cardboard, and plastic waste that it generates. And that's not even mentioning shipping. So an app that lets me collect the cards, play some matches, even if the rules are streamlined, and more importantly, experience the TCG card art in a way that doesn't involve so much waste, I will absolutely give it a shot. The immersive cards sound super cool. And of course, Pokemon Legends ZA. We know so little about this game, but we know enough for me to be excited. First, we're not getting a major release this year. It could be next January for all we know, but we're getting the break that we all needed. Second, Pokemon Legends is back, and I have no reason to expect that this new entry will be anything like Pokemon Legends Arceus. Judging by the minimal information we got in the trailer and the official website, it seems this game will take place entirely within Lumio City. To me, it sounds like the setting will be contemporary rather than in the past, and the story is centered around urban redevelopment. In terms of themes and gameplay, my only expectation is that this game will feel as unexpected and fresh as Legends Arceus felt before. It's not going to be exactly that same thing again. Third. We're getting Pokemon Z. To me, it's always been pretty clear that at some point Pokemon Z or something like that was being planned and that eventually it was scrapped. Some ideas were reused in Sun and Moon, but it still left a lot of loose threads in Kalos that they can finally explore again. Lumia's Ghost Girl? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and fourth, Megas are coming back in the best possible way. I did not particularly like the mechanics of Mega Evolution, the lore of Mega Evolution was weak and contradictory if you look at Oraz, and it was poorly used in the main story of X and Y. But I've always loved the designs of Megas, so bringing them back in a game that probably isn't going to become the VGC standard feels right. You get to bring them back without the expectation that they will continue to have a presence in the competitive scene going forward, you get to make new Mega designs, maybe even for the Kalos starters, and hopefully you can weave Mega Evolution into the story and key battles in a more significant way than X and Y did. They would even have the opportunity to tweak the mechanics and the lore, although I'm not holding my breath for that. My only disappointment is that I was expecting Johto to be the next region we return to. Whether it would be a Let's Go type of game, a Legends game, or something else entirely, I didn't have any predictions, but Johto is the region we haven't visited in the longest time, so I thought the next game would go there. But I'm sure it'll happen soon. This will be a great, slow year, and I'm looking forward to what 2025 will bring. Part 2, the Wild Encounter Tag. Since Birdkeeper Toby retired, Elite Trainer Lin introduced a new getting to know you kind of tag video to replace Once to Battle. It's got 10 questions, so let's get to them. Number 1, what is your favorite Pokemon and your first Pokemon game? My favorite Pokemon is Umbreon with honorable mentions to Smeargle, Shedinja, Obstagoon, Garganacle, and Clodsire, and probably others that I'm not thinking of right now. And my first game was Pokemon Yellow. Number two, what is your favorite and least favorite starter Pokemon? Whether we're talking about first stage only or full lines, the favorite is easy. It's Rowlet or Decidueye, a standard Decidueye. Least favorite is harder because in general, all starter families have some endearing quality, but I think the most disappointing overall are Cinderace and Inteleon. Number three, do you think Pokemon designs overall have gotten worse, better, or stayed to the same? I've discussed this in more detail before, but I think Pokemon designs peaked in Generation 7. Generations 8 and 9 have some fantastic designs, but the proportion of designs that just don't work for me has gotten bigger. Number 4. If you lived in the Pokemon world, what city or town would you like it to be? I didn't have a ready answer for this, but I looked around, and I think Violet City or Necreen City would be good options. Both are cities, but not very large ones. Violet has easy access to the Ruins of Alf, National Park, Goldenrod City, and Ecruteague City. 
Nakreen is artsy, it has a fantastic museum, and it's nestled in Pinwheel Forest, but not too far from Castalia. I think I could be happy in either one. Number five, what's an idea for a brand new Pokemon species that you've had? I grew up in Brazil, so I feel a special affinity for South American fauna. I would love to see Pokemon based on the maned wolf, the giant anteater, or the golden lion tamarind, for example. Number six, if Pokemon added a new type, what would you want it to be? To be honest, I don't think they should add any new types without rethinking the entire type chart from scratch. I did make a video years ago exploring that idea, and one of the big ideas behind it was to turn egg groups into types, and I think that would be pretty cool. Number seven, how would you fix a Pokemon you dislike? I used to do a lot of Pokemon redesigns in this channel, and I did redesign a lot of Pokemon that I don't like. I think Dusclops is my favorite, but the biggest improvement from Pokemon I don't like to Pokemon I do like or would like if it were real were Sock and Throw. There's a playlist of redesigns if you want to watch all of those videos. I should really do another redesign sometime soon. Number eight, how do you feel about shiny Pokemon that look almost identical to their regular forms? They feel like a missed opportunity, that's for sure. Uh, to me, the value that the shiny Pokemon can offer isn't the rarity, it's only in whether I like the color scheme. I often like shinies that are subtle except for one significant difference, like Aaron, for example, but the ones that are just subtle, like Garchomp or Mousehold, aren't gonna excite me. Number nine, Ed Sheeran's song Celestial was used in Scarlet and Violet. Do you think Pokemon should use more celebrity collabs in their games? Personally, I didn't hate Celestial, but it also didn't appeal to me at all. I don't think pop music should have a place in the game's soundtrack unless it's somehow diegetic. If it's in-world pop music, that would be really cool. But the lyrics of Celestial barely have a connection to Pokemon, so it doesn't work. That said, Pokemon is clearly working to make itself a more and more mainstream brand, and partnering with pop artists is an effective way to do that. So I won't be surprised if we hear more radio pop in future games. Number 10. What regional form would you want for your favorite Pokemon? I don't think the Eevee family is likely to ever get regional forms because they're too iconic, they're too close to being mascots, but thematically they would be great candidates since their whole deal is being able to adapt. It would make perfect sense if, for example, Umbreon in Sinnoh were more cold adapted, or if ones in Alola had adaptations for hunting in the ocean. I think they should keep their type, or at least keep it as a primary type and add a secondary one, but changes to the design, the stats, the moves, or abilities could be really cool. Now I'm supposed to tag three people, but I don't like tagging people. Sorry, Lynn. In any case, this is meant to be an open tag, so if you want to answer these questions yourself, introduce yourself to the Pokemon community, go ahead, I hereby tag you. There are resources in the description. Part three, what can you expect from this channel in 2024? Well, I can tell you there won't be a lot of videos, but there are three big videos I wanna do this year, and I hope I can deliver on their quality, if not quantity. The first one is my review of Scarlet and Violet. I have it outlined, and I'm working through writing the script, but it's a long one, and I still need to record and edit, and so I hope it'll be out in March, but it may only be ready in April. The other two videos are more research-based deep dives into some topics that Scarlet and Violet made me interested in. I don't want to tell you much more just in case things change and I don't end up writing about those topics this year, but they will be along the lines of my Pokemon Journey video. You should watch that if you haven't, it's my best video. If I only make those three big videos this year, I'll be happy, but there will probably be other smaller videos here and there, like this one. I might also do some streams. I haven't felt like doing them much recently, but sometimes I miss them. So we'll see. I would like to do a charity event again this year, but I don't have any specific plans for it yet. By the way, I have decided to reinstate mid-roll ads in my videos because they do make a significant difference to the passive income that I can get. But if you prefer to watch my videos with no ads and no tracking whatsoever and still completely free, just like on YouTube, I encourage you to follow my new channel on Spectra, a PeerTube platform. PeerTube is like Mastodon, but it's for video. All of my videos will still be on YouTube, but the best past videos and most of the upcoming ones will also be on Spectra. The link is in the description, and if you're watching this on Spectra, please leave a comment and let me know. Oh, and of course, I will continue to support Rate Pokemon. 
If you're not familiar with it, Rate Pokemon is a website where you can rate Pokemon designs on things like how cute or humanoid they are, compare your ratings to the averages, and explore how those average ratings compare between different Pokemon or groups of Pokemon. At this point, every Pokemon design has been rated by at least 80 different people, and we're just shy of 100,000 ratings in total. We're in the process of adding the Indigo Disc Pokemon to the site right now, so I'll have a separate announcement when that's ready. I know it's a little weird to ask for donations when I'm putting out less and less content, but I still have expenses with these videos, captions, editors, sometimes there are expenses to do with the research, and of course, the time I put into them. So if you like what I do and you want to support it, you can give me a tip on Ko-fi. You can tip just one time or become a member or even commission me. And either way, you'll get invited to join my private community on Discord. Thank you to all of my Libros who support me and to everyone who has supported me in the past. I'll see you in the next chapter.